Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to talk about this image that I have here, which is about the whole aesthetically driven social six anterior only compromised treatment versus comprehensive. And hey, I know that not all patients are looking for perfect, but this is something that I really, a point I really want to drive home, which is as a GDP, as a GP, as a general dentist, it's okay if you're doing specialty work. I don't mind. I'm cool with you doing orthodontics. I know you're going to do it anyways. That's why I started a business, Straight Smile Solutions, to help support dentists to do more specialty work in an ideal way, you know, at the level of an orthodontist. But if you're not going to give the patient perfect, you need to be able to explain what perfect is is that is a point that most general dentists are lacking and this point can get you into trouble let me explain why well first of all part of any procedure is explaining the risk benefits and alternatives so even if you're not able to provide that alternative and you can only provide this one way and there's three other ways to do it unless you can confidently explain what the three other ways are, what the benefits are, what the risks are, what the alternatives are of those ways, you have no business business offering your way. Does that make sense? Because that's not part of explaining risks, benefits, and alternatives. You can get yourself in trouble doing this because you're not fully explaining everything to the patient. So this is why I really recommend that dentists get trained up on all procedures, even if you're not going to be providing them all. And that's okay. So I'll give you an example. Even for me, sometime into my career, I decided, you know what? It's really not worth my time for me to be offering orthognathic surgery procedures. I've done them before. I have experience doing them. I know how to do them. I elect not to do them in my practice at that time. Why? Well, I mean, just insurance different, it's just not worth it. I mean, it's a really, really important procedure for a lot of patients, but the amount of time, manpower, skill set that goes into it, training for assistance is not worth the, what, the, the income that I need to charge for it in order to be reimbursed by insurance. It's just not. It takes years and years and years to do this. And I mean, to me, worth it would be about 20 grand for ortho. I mean, to because it takes two, three, four years to prep for and go through the whole case. I need to be on call right before the procedure. I need to be on call surgically, possibly even go to the hospital right after the procedure. It's a lot of work. And the level of training that my team would need to have in order to manage these patients, both front and back, is really not worth it to me. So I'm not going to provide that procedure in my office. Very transparent about it on the front end. But I'm familiar with it, and I can explain it, and I can tell them what to expect and where to go. So if someone comes in and that would be the best thing for them, I'm going to tell them the best thing for you is a jaw surgery. I'm going to tell you about it. It's not something that I'm providing, but I really can recommend the following doctors or clinics or universities, often dental schools, orthodontic residencies are the best place to get it because it's most cost efficient. If that's something you want to do, I would highly recommend you go get screened for that procedure. I think it's the best for you. And if they still decline and they understand the risk benefits and alternatives because I can explain it to them, then that's okay because I already explained it to them. So that makes sense. So this is very similar to how it is for general dentists. If you guys have a patient that comes in and you're really only interested in doing social six treatment, but it would be way better for them for it to be the whole bite created. Perhaps the social six treatment would just straighten teeth only. It would leave a little bit of overjet. It wouldn't fix the overbite. It wouldn't fix the posterior crossbite, but it would give them straight front teeth. You need to be able to explain to the patient what things will get better what things will stay the same and what things will get worse if you do this more compromised treatment. And unless you're confidently able to explain that to them, you really should be doing no orthodontics in your practice. And that's the part I really, really want to hammer home. So what types of procedures should you do as compromise and what types should you not? Well, I really can't create a bucket for you like that. I wish I could. I can tell you which ones I really, really don't think you should do. But I don't know that there's any that would fit in this meat bucket that you could always do. So ones that I think you should really, really stay away from would be trying to mess with any type of anterior open bite at all. Um, way, way, way more complicated than you're thinking. Hardly ever stable. Almost always relapses. Just stay away from those cases. That would be a 
you know, red light, stay away from this case. Um, I also would recommend that you be careful with class three cases, especially leaving compromise in class three cases. I just wouldn't do it. I don't have a huge issue with leaving some overjet in a patient. That's okay. As long as your overjet isn't worse than when you started. And as long as in the process of leaving overjet for the patient and straightening the teeth, the overjet isn't getting worse and the open bite isn't getting worse in the process. So it's okay to do compromised cases as long as you're leaving them better off and able to function better from where they started. So sometimes for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That means as I do one thing, something else is going to possibly get worse. So you need to be able to know confidently what things will get worse and what things will get better if you were to take that case and if you were to treat it non-ideally, okay? What other things am I okay leaving compromised? Well, I'm quite okay leaving a posterior crossbite. Super fine with that, as long as it's nice and stable. You don't wanna like get it like teetering on the edge or anything like that. It needs to like stay fully in crossbite on those molars. Super fine with that. No one ever had a problem. You don't even need to fix that. There's no benefit to fixing that. So, I mean, obviously getting them a better airway is nice if you could do it, but most often in adults, that's really not stable or possible without a jaw surgery. So I'm okay with that. Just don't even try to fix it, leave it. So I'm cool with that. I'm also cool with leaving some overjet as long as it's not worse or as long as it doesn't create, doesn't push the teeth to a point of instability, um, cause root resorption. Obviously you'd need to consult with a staff before you made that decision. You can't just guess. So. That would be part of the whole risk benefits and alternatives. You'd need to take a step in those situations. Um, not okay with compromised class three cases, not okay with compromised open bite cases. Usually the risks outweigh the benefits in those situations. Even though they feel like they have straight teeth, there's other functional issues that tend to get worse in those situations. Um, what else? Crossbite, overbite. Leaving a deep bite, overbite, mm, not the best thing. Um, as long as it doesn't get worse, right? Open bite, definitely not. Overjet, usually okay. Not fixing torque, probably not a huge issue. Posterior open bites, definitely don't create those. That's not a great idea. That's bad. Posterior spacing, ugly. Um, it's okay as long as it's big enough to clean. It's not okay if it's small and becomes a perio trap. Um, anterior open bites, not okay. So hopefully this is helpful, and this is why I really want to stress to all general dentists who are dipping their toes in orthodontics that you really fully understand everything, even if you only want to treat a certain sub-bucket of cases. Because without that confidence and without that ability to explain the risks, benefits, and alternatives um, of the comprehensive, you have no business providing the alternative treatment. And I just can't say that enough. All right, thanks so much.